kind of hey guys sorry that I just lost you for a minute I hope they come back <laughs> yeah, I don't know what just happened. I don't know why my computer just decided to destroy the world, but it did. Um, so there you go. That is the link. <laughs> was that my fault? No, it was not your fault at all. It was. It's my computer. Um, I'm. I'm actually streaming on my 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 Mac at the moment, and my Mac just decided to be a little annoying. Um, so yeah, it's not your fault <laughs> at all. But I hope the link gets you where you where you were. No, it was not your fault at all. Sorry guys, I got like Yeah, my computer's really weird. I don't know why it does that. Okay, what is going on? Alright, sorry guys. Did my video just stop? Is that what just happened? I'm just going to refresh this. Okay, you guys can see everything. Uh, I did lose the chat, so for folks that are watching, uh, again, sorry for the little bit of technical difficulties. I don't know why that just happened, but anyway. Um, all right, I'm still looking for piece number eight. Yeah, so keep on posting, keep on chatting. I don't know, my, my browser keeps telling me. My browser actually is telling me there's nobody watching me, which I think I am now convinced. There we go. I'm now convinced that that is wrong. It just kicked it. Uh, Okay, my browser's doing weird stuff. So, either my video's coming in and out, or... Yeah, so just confirm if you're still around, because I will not know if you are watching, if you are not watching. Um, it's just a bunch of weird stuff going on right now. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on. It's like... Um, and if you guys are a fan of tabletop stuff... Um, you definitely want to check out, uh, we do, I do, a sh I do RPG tabletop stuff on Thursday. So we'll have our continuation of our campaign. Um, if you want to have some fun with us, so check that out too. But yeah, like I said, the, the easiest way to know when we're live is to follow what you guys have already done. So I think, yeah. So if I don't, if I don't connect with you, I don't see, uh, uh, don't, don't think that I'm not, uh, that I'm not happy you're watching, but I may not be able to say, I know like typically a streamer will be able to say, I'm happy you're here, but <laughs> I won't. my software and my stuff is not letting me know that. So it is intriguing and weird all at the same time. Mm. Wow. Okay. So it begins. It begins where I super glue stuff to my hands because the world is going to make fun of me and make me feel like I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, the reason why is because, you know, Games Workshop, I, I love you guys a lot, but why would you make a model that doesn't just snug fit? So you guys can see where we're at so far. So it's starting to look pretty cool. This this guy is massive. He's on an 80 mil base, so he's gonna look. He's gonna be massive when I'm done. Um, we're gonna speed this up though, because I, I do not want to spend all night making one model. That is not how I roll. I do not do that normally. Um, is this 26? It is. Yeah, I got so much cool stuff coming. If you guys are Hellboy fans, I got a. I got the Hellboy board game coming. 
Uh, I'm going to have some folks to play with me. We're going to have some really cool stuff coming down the channel. Um, and, and, and some really cool exclusive, um, exclusive looks. Uh, and if you want to have some fun, we actually did... Uh, we do it, we we're trying to do it once a month, but we did a talk show format where we talked about um, sort of the state of gaming, you know, things in the gaming world um, with COVID and just companies and things like that. Like we've been doing these monthly, uh, I, I like to call them like state of the union videos for uh, for uh, tabletop gaming and all that stuff. Um, if you want to watch that, uh, I actually did an unboxing of the new AOS army in there. Um, which I'll be painting those up. So you guys are going to see that new army, that new elf army that just got released, which uh, I should have mentioned them as one of my armies because I totally uh, got the box and I am totally going to rock them. Love Hellboy and all things comic books. I'm a nerd. <laughs> well, if you couldn't notice behind me, I'm one too. <laughs> That's good. I was gonna say, I realized that I'm using my bigger cab today. So uh, if you guys couldn't figure out from what's behind me that I am a giant nerd, you got my painting. This is my painting desk behind me. Um, you probably noticed the Kingdom Hearts 3 poster behind that. I am literally wearing a... You're in the friendly neighborhood of Queens with Spider-Man on it as my t-shirt. Um, all of that is comic book related figures. I got more comic... Well, actually, there's, there's a lot of models up here um but there's also a bunch of fun clothes and stuff behind that so uh you know i'm right there with you i I'm, i am a nerd beyond belief um if you love things comic books then you should definitely think about checking out my patreon and becoming a member um you know you you become a member on the patreon you can get access to about 30 you're gonna get access to 35 po posts right away um i want kingdom hearts love marvel and dc Yes. Um, well, if you love Marvel and DC, you'll love my Instagram because uh, I will also be doing uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol content. Um, so eventually I will get back to it. I'm working on this army now, but uh, I don't know if you know who that is. But if you're a Marvel fan, I expect an answer right now. Um, but that is, of course, Groot from the Marvel Crisis Protocol game. Um, so I'm painting that up, and I'm also painting up, or will be painting up, Rocket. Because I was able to get Rocket and Groot. Um, and if you didn't notice, that actually is the rest of Groot's hand. So he's actually sitting on Groot, who has now shoved his hand through the concrete. So I'll be doing, I'll be doing some of the, uh, I'll be, I will be doing, uh, gameplay and, and scenario play with that game as well. If you are, if you are, in fact, a big Marvel. Uh, and DC, I don't want to leave you guys out. I have the Batman miniature game. I've painted those models, too. And again, if you go to my Instagram, you can check out other examples. If you go to my website, moderngeekcomics.com, which is below, you can check out that as well. Because I have a whole painting section on there, too. But yeah, if you go on the Patreon, if you're really into comic books, I'm actually doing my own indie comics. There's actually one strip already up there. Uh, I'm going to be releasing the second strip. There's going to be four stories. I'm going to do them bi-weekly, I'm hoping. Uh, I may only get one strip at first a month to you guys, but I'm going to try to do two. Uh, but there's going to be multiple stories. Uh, it's called Funny Papers, uh, and it's going to be um, available to a lot of folks. So, uh... Yeah, it's going to be a collection of my own stories, my own characters, and my own comics. And like I said to everybody, if you incomplete Marvel but love Wonder Woman, I love Wonder Woman too. Uh, like I said, the Batman. So then maybe you might enjoy some of the Batman miniature game stuff that I do. Um, I also we're gonna also be doing some other tabletop games. Um, so I'll be I'll be doing that as well, uh, and I have some DC based tabletop games. That's cool, too. All good. Yeah, pretty much I'm going to run the gamut. You know, so I'm, I am I, I love tabletop games. I love um, miniature games. I love uh, illustration and comic books. And I, myself, am an artist. So I'm all across the board. Yeah, I, believe me, I can, 
I can you could show. But like I said, if you join the Patreon, um, I actually did a Wonder Woman sketch uh, in one of my. I was doing uh, every day, which I'm gonna get back to that. But every day I was doing a sketch, one sketch a day. Uh, I had some family matters that put me into a spot where I couldn't do that. So, um, but I will I will be getting back to it. Um, so yeah, the the Patreon's gonna. Uh, I'm gonna miss Stanley in the Marvels films. Yes, I am too. Uh, I actually got to meet Stanley, which was really really cool. And I and I'm really happy that in my lifetime I got to do that. Um, but I got to meet him. Um, he was a really cool guy. Um, and I and I will deeply miss him in those uh, in those films. So I am I am right there with you. I think I thought he was amazing. But let's talk about that. Let's talk about Marvel film. Let, oh, and also, for all of us 40K fans out there, I mean, has everybody heard the news here? Because I know I'm really excited. But we all know that uh, they're, they're licensed, they licensed out a, a 40K uh, IP to Marvel to do a comic book series. How cool is that? Now you're going to get 40K storytelling, but with Marvel treatment. I'm so excited. I'm ready for that. I'm, I'm so ready to go. I'll probably do a little review of that as well. <laughs> I want. I like. I like how it's simple. I want. Oh, oh, I, oh! I literally. That was amazing. I glued my hands together, which made me drop the model. That was. That was something. That was. You know, they talk about physics. I feel like when you build when you build Games Workshop models, there's another type of physics that happens, that's unbelievably and crazy. Crazy. That makes no sense when you're trying to build a 40k model. Um, yeah, I'll do. I'm gonna do a little review of that, and I, I think. Don't lose bits. Scary. Oh, I find everyone. So I, funny story about losing bits. <laughs> don't lose your bits. <laughs> I feel like that's gonna become a tag phrase for my channel. Um, don't. Actually, that's a good name. It's a good name for a, that's a good name for a painting series. Don't lose the, don't lose the bits. Everyone that just heard that name, I've copyrighted it. It's copyrighted everywhere. You can't use that. You can never use that. I own it. I had this stream to prove that I invented it. I'll take you to court. I promise. I will. Um, let's. <laughs> it's, re it's really open, right? It makes you want to come back to a stream of a guy screaming, "I'm going to sue all of you." Um, all right. Oh, this is one of those things. All right, what was that that you just pumped? That was 31. 31's over there. Because 30 and 31 look exactly the same. I'm talking about losing bets. Now, if I were a betting man, I would say that 31 and 30 should be in the same place. But uh, no, they're not. Probably. Knowing Games Workshop, there it is. What's the deal with all the bits? Yep, Games Workshop is smoking more crack. That's where they want me to put these bits. So you have to put the bits actually in here, right on top of there. Yep. What is the likelihood that I will glue this in the right? Okay. Ooh, actually. Like I said, I, th this model, by the way, is bananas. Like there are so there are so much detail on this model. He he's gonna take a little bit of time to paint, just a tiny bit. Ah, I meant to do that. All right, so you guys probably can't see. Well, I'm I'm really flirting with disaster with that thing. I glued it back again. I've broke. I've almost broken it twice. Um, I do prefer this glue. I'm going to tell you why. Um, I'm glad you asked. So you probably notice I'm using super glue rather than Citadel glue. Um, so I like I like um, 
and I'm going to hold it up to the other camera just so you guys can see. Uh, I like super glue, and specifically, I, I should mention, you want to buy the gel control super glue. Do not buy the other super glue. There's an orange cap one. Um, and the reason I like it is because the reason I like super glue is that it sets faster. Um, that's one. So I like super glue over Citadel glue because it sets a lot quicker. So especially when you're doing little bits like that, you can put a lot more super glue and it just kind of sits in place. The other reason I don't like the plastic glue is that although the plastic glue gives you a stronger bond, and I will be the first one to admit that the plastic glue does give you a stronger bond. Um, it also, the way it does that is it eats the plastic. So if you mess up a model in gluing and you keep trying to re-glue it and put more and more of the Citadel glue on it, like it dries out and then you put more, um, it sort of deteriorates the, um, it deteriorates the plastic. So if there's like, for a lot of, for instance, AOS models, so AOS models sometimes, especially if you do night haunt models, there's very intricate pieces where like there's a little flap or a little peg that you sort of have to rest the piece on. Keep using the plastic glue, eventually the peg goes away. You actually eat the peg away and then it becomes really hard to sit that model correctly. Um, so I started using it because um, it just became easier. And it also alleviated me. Oh, wow. This is a pain in the butt. All right. I think I figured it out. Tell me about it. I've been doing Night Haunt so fragile. Yes. Night Haunt models are so hard. And also, it alleviates you having to do, like, the whole arms and the, and the um, like, setting it and forgetting it. Like, you know, that's what happened a lot with the Night Haunt army that I did. But see, what I like about the super glue is, like, this is a great example. Now what I can do is... I can just cake a little super glue into there and then the and then the cabling has lined up perfectly so you can see now I was able to get that in there in two seconds and if I was doing this with traditional Citadel glue I'd have to wait for this to dry before I could start working the rest of the model which if I just talk to you guys for probably a minute or two I can get um I can get on with my life or just leave it there um, so I like it but to be fair and I'll be the first to admit that um, a Citadel glue does sh do a stronger bond, you know, so it, it's a trade-off. You get, you get a faster working condition, but, um, you lose a little bit of the strength, so. And I think you'll see, as you guys watch me, I do love Banshees. Ooh, you like Banshees, do you? So I'll show off another ni Night Haunt model paint which if you looked at my Instagram you might have already seen this oh. sorry got to get it to focus on my banshee I gotta focus. I, this camera is pretty good, but I, I also have the camera tilted at the moment. There we go. Sorry for focusing issues, guys. Yeah, my lighting. I'll, I'll when I when we're doing the painting video, I'll show you guys some better better examples. This the lighting I have for this. I figured because I was just building a model, I didn't have to like pull out my lights and stuff. Um, but if you go to my Instagram, you can see it more. Love that color. Yep. Yeah, that and by the way, that is that is all so that is more the traditional way, but that's just white. With um that is the what are you? Where are you? Where are you? That's the um 
Night Haunt Green or Spectral Green. It's the washes. It's the big washes. And Night Haunt Blue. That's the blue and the green. And that's done. That's with traditional Citadel colors. So I didn't do any of that with contrast. Although I have other examples where I... Yeah, I didn't finish that yet. Where I played with contrast paints, but... Not that I want to turn this into show my painting stuff, because I want to build this model, but there's my Knight of Shrouds. So I got Night Haunt folks in the house, and I'm doing 40k. You guys are getting a 40k model, so I got to give the AOS crowd a. Uh, I got to give the AOS crowd some love. I don't want to focus. It wants to focus over here. Wow. All right. Sorry, guys. Oh, there we go. Da, 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 Part of it is because I've tilted my camera, so it's really, really hard. So if you see, I actually kept the horse with... um. A like very heavy black, a heavy black shroud on it. But I almost that, that's this is this. Uh, I call it a. It's like a cell gen type of style. Wow, that's a thing of beauty. Steals it. <laughs> that's that's fine. Yeah, it's like a it's like a cell gen look. That's what it. That's what I was kind of going for. So I was looking, because I have a lot of the Dragon Ball Z figures that are like that. And I was like, ooh, I really like that paint style. And I was like, I want to do it in a, on miniatures and just try to do something different. Because I wanted my armies, when I showed up to play people, I was like, it's when I was first getting into commission painting a little bit more. Or looking to start thinking about commission work. Which, by the way, if you guys like any of the painting you saw, totally contact me through my website for commissioned uh, gigs or work. Uh, I'm very fair on that. I'm very fair on prices. But, yeah, um, I started getting into that, so I wanted my stuff to look different. And I wanted to show up to tournaments and have my stuff look different. So, uh, or, or events. And so I was like, ooh, I'm going to come up with this different painting style. Um, it, it actually started with my or, uh, with my goblin army, because it was a little bit more ridiculous. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I was like, my goblin army can look kind of weird, because they're goblins. And, and you know, nobody takes... Nobody takes goblins that seriously. But, you know, pretty much when you're an AOS player and you, you like, show up with goblins, you're pretty much instantly, um, instantly people think there's something wrong with you. Oh, jeez. Um, so, yeah, so, I was like, ooh, if people are going to think there's something wrong with me to begin with, I might, I might as well just go for it. I shouldn't say something. Maybe something wrong with you is the wrong term. But what I mean by it is, you know, people I think instantly think you're not going to win because it's got, you know, goblins have that reputation of being. Um, so have you spent a fortune? Because I know, I know there. Um, I've done it in little waves. Um, I'll be honest. I've been buying pieces. I'm that trip typical story. With um, yeah um, I I'm that typical story like a lot of players where I, I think a lot of players would share the sentiment. We all I, I feel like everybody who starts these games you buy a lot of models and then, you know, two years later you actually play a game. <laughs> um, and and you know then you start to play play the stuff so. You know, you may have a lot of models in a certain range, but then you finally get to that next step and play. Um, I'm sort of that that side of coin. You know, I, uh, I I started buying a few models here and there. Um, then I oh my god, this this is insane. This guy has a when we're done, he has like a, a he has like a four shot Gatling cannon that's on the side of him. Um, 
this is a, this model is a thing of beauty. I'm gonna really enjoy painting this model. It's really, really. Oh boy, there's a lot of pieces to this. Okay, I'm down. Let's go. 18, I need. Yeah, I've I've spent a lot. I own Nagesh. Do I need to say more as an AOS player? I I own Nagesh. I own the Nagesh model. I own the Glockin model. I own the unclean one. So you guys already know how much those are. That I mean alone right there is a is four to five hundred dollars. And then uh, you know all the armies I own, all the box sets I've bought, all the boxed game sets I've bought. In fact, now that I've recalled all of it, I'm kind of depressed. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but that's why I'm going to start putting up some painting samples and some things for sale. Um, so if you're a 40k player and you're really into ultra means uh, and some other stuff, uh, I'm going to have things out there for you. So stay tuned. Because I do, I do have to sell off some of it. Like in this box set, the the aforementioned uh, space wolves, all the What do you mean my bad? Oh no no wait 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 what's what's my bad? Oh no 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 bad. No 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 I was kidding. I don't really I don't I don't really I, I've already gone to therapy for the money I've spent. It's okay. I don't want anyone to feel bad. This is a place of joy, this is a place of happiness. We're building some models. It's not no 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 hard feelings here. I say that I'm sad, but you know that's a lie. I enjoy and like every model I have. And because I bought all these models, I'm gonna do some wacky crazy stuff. Jokes, lots of laughs. I am also joking. Back back. Or am I? No. <laughs> Just kidding. Alright, so tell me more. Tell me what your favorite stuff is. I like this. And by the way, everyone that told me their army, you guys have excellent taste in armies. I like it. I like it, I like it. I'm missing one canister. Oh, there's 19. Beside, so here's the, here's the cool question. Besides Games Workshop, is there any other games that you all play? Cats, lots of less. As in, it, because I'm not, for, I'm actually not as familiar with that that game. Are you talking about like exploding kittens? And and if if not, if is there is there an actual game called Cats? Or no, you're saying Cats as far as the army. was said before oh I do knitting okay knitting's cool I like knitting knitting is cool and knitting has a lot of there's a lot of precision in knitting which like for people that don't know about knitting like there's a ton of precision around knitting As I say, actually, my my buddy. Oh, jeez, no. I actually host my buddy's channel, which maybe that's where you're from. If it is, that's cool. Um, I just want cats like crazy, cat lady. Um, so I will say, I am not a huge. Um, I am not. I am not a huge fan of cats. When I say that, I want to preface that. I am not a huge fan of cats as, like, for me to own a cat as a pet. Um, I have in my lifetime had a cat. But, uh, you know, I, I will I will say this. I, I think... I think I had a cat way too early in life. 
because it was when I was very young. And I think little kids, as much as, you know, I, 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 I do believe in, in little kids, you know, having animals around the house and having an animal or a pet. Um, no, I do believe in that. Um, I just think as a little kid, I wasn't ready to have a cat. Because, like, having a cat is like a whole other adventure. And, and, like, as a little kid, um, I, I don't think I understood wholeheartedly what a cat meant. Because to, for cats, oh, I didn't actually pay attention to which one of these I took. And there are, and no one GW, are there a bunch of wires I have to connect to these damn turrets? But yeah, as like a little kid, I, I just didn't understand what a cat was supposed to do or how to take care of a cat. Um, and, and I say that because I always felt bad. Um, because I felt like, oh geez, here we go. I always felt bad because I felt like I... Yes, this is Gaz. Yeah, this is this is 100% Gaz. I will give you guys a better shot of what I'm doing. I'm sorry. This putting these the okay, that's what you're not supposed to have all. Let me see a front shot. What we got? I think I understand what that. Ah, Jesus. All right, does this have? Nope, that has something else. Sorry guys, I'm like I'm like piecemealing this model together because I I messed up and I didn't I didn't look at I didn't really look at how I was supposed to hook these up. Okay, not a problem. I understand. Cleeway, Aussie, I get it. Yeah, for me it's like nighttime. If I go out and prime now, I'm gonna get eaten by mosquitoes. But I, I kind of want to prime because I'm, I'm, my models are starting to pile up. Like for our AOS crowd out there, I got uh, I got um, Gortrex, uh, Gortrex, which I'm so dying to paint him for Warcry. This model is amazing. So I got that. I got a bunch of. Uh, Warhammer Quest stuff to do. Uh, I'll be unboxing a box of Warhammer Quest. For folks that are interested, we'll be doing that on the channel at some point. Um, and I'll be playing some Warhammer Quest. I ask everyone, but no one lets me have a tiger. Haha. <laughs> um... I've seen a lot of shows where people have exotic edibles like that, and I want to say that a lot of times it doesn't end too well. So uh, I'm kind of actually happy they're not letting you have a tiger. I feel, I feel like, I feel like there are a lot of times where that doesn't work well. Just saying. Yeah, this is crazy. This guy is nuts. There's like a lot of stuff going on in this model. I got my Sphinx from Warcry. Yes. I actually want that model. I haven't gotten that model yet. That is how I got... Um, I got a Chimera that way. That's I have the Chimera for... I actually bought it for Warcry. Because uh, I'll... Hopefully... Okay. So this is going to be interesting. Okay. Oh, Lord Almighty, give me strength. All right, so I need that to go this way. I need this to go that. All right, so I think it goes that way. I think his his does it like point up? Yeah, it does. Ah, 
Okay, so the reason why that didn't work for all you for all you folks at home is that I literally put glue on a piece of it that doesn't connect to the rest of the model. <laughs> so I put the glue inside of the hole. I didn't put it on the actual ledge of the piece, which that was dumb. Um, I swear, guys, I build models and I paint them. I really do. Oh my God, what is going on? It's like I've, it's like I've never ever built a GW model before. Um, yeah, this model, this model for you folks at home, this model is insane. This, this, this is gonna be crazy. It's gonna be really, really crazy when it's finished. Like, yeah, this is, this is. All right, so I'm gonna just, oh yeah. Oh man! All right, sorry guys, I got to take it away from the camera. The problem is, and and this is just—it's not a problem. It's just sometimes with GW models, um, it's the way you build them, which is which. By the way, this is part of—I say this on all of my videos. This is why I build the model, prime it, and then paint it, because this is a this model actually is a perfect example as to why I do that. Because there's literally going to be pieces of this that you don't have to paint. Because it's your... I'm just going to put it that way while we're waiting while I get the next piece queued up. Alright. Here we go. Oh yeah, Because he's got a claw arm. That's what we're building next. He's got claws, bro. He's coming at you with claws. Man, it's crazy. Alright, 30... 36. I'm going to need 38 in a minute. Okay. Yeah, I love that Sphinx model. I like all the monsters for uh, Warcry. Which, speaking of GW and some of the things that I don't like about them as a company... Um, those those Warcry monsters are actually one of them because if you buy the if you buy the regular Chimera, they don't charge you any different price, but they give you less in it because they don't give you the Warcry cards. What do you use to prime? Um, so priming, I use Citadel Primer. So I do use the Citadel Primer for that. Um, I'm using a lot more. So I'm using when I paint. Um, I'm trying to think of what I showed you example wise. So actually, everything I showed you example wise, I uh, know the unclean one I did with contrast paints. Um, I am using a lot more of a mixture of contrast. I, so I use contrast paints and the traditional Citadel paints. I actually mix all of the colors together. So that's why, like even when you look at this, um, I'm using the traditional. It's not done yet. You guys, I'm going to take a break and then I'm going to come back and we're going to be painting this. Um, you'll see that I'm using, so that's actually the contrast blue that you see there, that's the contrast red, that's the contrast purple, um, but then the gold is like the Bothello uh, gold that you would use normally on like Chaos or, or Chaos Demons, which a lot of people use it for. Um, so I use a mixture of the Citadel paints with the contrast paints, so that A, makes the model look very different, and then I also mix them together to create other effects. So, um, so I use a lot, so I've now switched to white priming, so I use either Cortex White with the Citadel primer, or I'll use the specific um, um, contrast primers. So the Wraithbone uh, or Gracier White primers that they use. But I do use Citadel primers. Sorry guys, I'm just trying to figure out how to do this. I know I didn't have anything on camera for a minute. Okay, wait.
Oh, okay, I see the trick. Oh, sorry, it took me a minute to catch up with the model, guys. Sorry, sorry. Oh my god, internet died. Eh. Well, I can tell you with certainty that nothing nothing extraordinarily interesting happened while you were gone. I was just trying to figure out, because uh, when you do the, the claw part, you have to do the spread. So... And by any means, for anyone that is watching, um, Please don't hesitate to jump in. Uh, I know we're doing model building, which for some, I, some people like watching the model building. Some people don't. I don't know. It's a it's a hit or miss. It's a hit or miss uh, type of crowd with this stuff. Um, I I promise I'll have a better setup. I was trying to do this. I'll be honest. Uh, I've been uh, I had some some physical stuff happen to me, and I have to sit in kind of a nice cushioned chair. So like I was trying to do this this way. This will be a little softer today. And also trying to set up thinking. I feel like when I build models the other way, it doesn't work as well. Um, but I think if, I, if I'm going to do painting here, I might have another idea on how we'll do it. And I, have a, I actually have a pretty easy way to set it up. And I think it'll actually come out really cool. Um, so we're going to test it out. I'm going to test it out before I come back. All right. Uh, now I need 34 and 35. 34 and 35. Ooh, some more big giant metal mech hands. That's what I'm talking about. Metal, metal. Uh, I missed if you said <laughs> what primer to use. Um, so Cortex White uh, Citadel Primer. So I've been using that most of the time when I just want something neutral. I like I don't have a if I don't have a particularly overall color scheme that I'm using. I'll use just the white. I uh, like I use the white for terrain. I use the white for other stuff. Um, but then I'm using the Gracier and the um, what is it called? Why can I not? I can't remember the other one. So Cortex White is one. Uh, Gracier. Oh, there we go. Wraithbone. So uh, the, basically, I'm using either Cortex White or the new Contrast Primers as the short answer. Um, because I've been using a lot of, um, of... I use Contrast Paints with the Citadel Paints, so I mix them all together. So to start with a white base is crucial when you're using the, the uh, Contrast Paints. Um, and then, like I said, I mix the contrast with the traditional, so it gets one. I, it's nice to use both because you get a variety of color schemes, but you also get um, some cool effects on, uh, where I can layer them to either create other effects or do other things. And I'll talk more about that when I'm in my painting video later on, because uh, we're going to be doing a lot of painting. We're going to be painting late, 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 late tonight, so you guys should come back. If you like what you've heard, if you like what I'm saying, if you think I'm pretty cool, you should totally follow the channel. Um, and you should check out the links below to both my website and my Patreon. And you can check me out. I put a link in the chat. I can do it again to my Instagram. You can see other, uh, you can see other examples of my painting and drawing and comic work. Um, so check it all out. And all of that support, of course, helps this channel. So the more you guys follow, the more you, uh, the more you check out my other things, follow those, share them, like them. Uh, it just gets me into other areas and gets me to get more support for this channel and my programming so I can do more and more stuff for all of you. I can went to the wrong camera because that's the right one. <laughs> ah, 35. Found it. I talked long enough and I found the piece. Yeah. I am rocking. All right. We are going to get this guy done. I'm going to go a little faster. I'm, I'm, oh, I just almost lost a bit. We know how importantly bad that would have been. All right. <laughs> Don't drop the bits. Oh, thank you for the hosting. That is so cool. Thank you, thank you. You died. That's cool. And as I said before, I am always interested to hear... Uh, 
I'm always interested to hear. Ah, God, I'm gonna get. Why, God, why, why do you want things to be glued to me? Um, sorry, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm fighting with the model, and I'm gonna tell you now, the model's winning. It's winning. It, it is beating me, left and right. Oh, Lord, oh, my. All right. And like I said, um, for folks that are watching, you know, we do, of course, the model building and the painting. Um, we also do some gameplay videos and video game stuff. So I am a multi-purpose channel. So check me out. And we're going to be doing a lot of cool stuff. Uh, you got to just get me a little bit of time to get the studio and things up and running, but I, I, I actually am going to get the final pieces of what I need and I can start building and doing stuff and the world will become more cool. I promise. Um, and since the world has been really crappy and terrible, I hope that I am bringing levity, fun, and excitement to your day. And I hope I got you to think about something else for a couple of minutes. That is the biggest reason that I started doing all this stuff. Um, and it's also because I love being creative and I want to share that creativity with others. Um, and I want, and I think that through art and through the things that we do and through games like this, um, we can bring a lot of people together and be in a much better place than we are now. Because it, I always say it, it's not without everyone working together, without all the people that we see every day, the people in our lives and the people in our communities, if we're not there together, we're not going to be able to get through this. So. Remember that. Remember that. Anytime you guys are feeling down, anytime you think things are overwhelming, just think about how somebody else in your neighborhood, you know, just by being with them, maybe by talking to them, maybe by checking things out with them, um, you know, you can 100% change the world. And that is a real thing, you know. And don't and, and I got some really really cool things planned next year. I'm gonna do some Disney stuff. Oh my God! I'm gonna do some live streaming in the park. We're gonna have some cool stuff. You definitely wanna check out this channel. It's only gonna get cooler. And uh, and and honestly, I'm hoping if if things can keep going the way they're going, and I can take you guys on the journey, I would love to not only be somebody who you get to see and got to know before they became somebody, but I really really hope that with your help my art my creativity it can all get out there and that's what i'm hoping from all of this so it's through all of you that i can make that happen so please check it out be a subscriber follow uh, if you can support on patreon you know that monetary way is supporting it does help but i get it you know i i'm i people in my family i know lots of people are going through hardships right now so that's why i get that and i would never ask somebody I would never ever ask somebody uh, for that support. Um, you know, it's great if you can. But, uh, all right. Oh, he's getting his hand on. This is exciting. He's getting his claw hand on. <laughs> this is the craziest model, by the way. Like, I think it's funny for anyone that plays 40k out there. That the orcs, like the orc people, the, the orcs way and thought of the world is that they would just get a giant mech suited guy. And that's their prime arc. It's insane to me. It's like, oh, we need, like they, they had to give them a prime arc. So of course, a an orc prime arc would be a giant mech suited orc. Okay, I'm definitely not putting enough glue on this. I'm going to load, I am going to load this up a little bit. Oh, I think I'm running out of glue. Oh, no, I'm not. And like I said to everybody, I basically, I will, I will say that I, that I spent $170. Um, I, I spent $170 for this model. That's essentially what I did, um, which is probably a terrible value statement. And GW, when Ninth Edition comes out, I will bet a bottom dollar to donuts they will sell this model by itself. 
Um, I didn't take that chance because I know that GW is a company that sometimes does do this where they will only have a model available in a particular box. They've done that before. Alright, I don't usually say I have to break for a minute, but I, for this one I actually think I do because I have to let that arm set. Um, but so far, he looks... I'm in the UK. Oh, very cool. I, I'm I'm really impressed. I've actually I, you're not the first. I'm 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 getting, and I'm assuming it's because I'm doing Warhammer stuff. Um, I'm really happy to see that I'm getting a lot of UK and a lot of around the world folks, um, which is really awesome. Um, me myself, I am. Ooh, I was. Shush, sh sh Okay. Um, apparently, I was supposed to put stuff on before I did that. And we know how, if you've built GW models yourself, you know that sometimes what I just did is a very bad value proposition because, uh, crap. All right, so let's see if I can make this work because I don't think I'm going to make it work. Crud. Crud on a crud cracker. Just crud. Okay, um, that piece is probably not going to be a problem. The other, two of the pieces out of the, uh, two of the pieces out of the are going to be a problem. Um, but I definitely screwed up. This is how you, you get things on backwards on a GW model, usually. All right. And then the last claw, 41. I didn't know if I was supposed to. Wow, my, my stream is like totally all over the place. I'm seeing people bouncing in and out. I don't know if like... Yeah, okay. Um... And, and this is going to... Okay. Yeah, no, I had it right. Okay, so you guys can start. I'm going to show you guys. Whoa. I'm going to show you guys where we're at. So you can see where we're at right now. He's looking real, real crazy. I'm loving this model. I'm hoping it focused. Oh, it did. Nice. Take it. So you guys can check, take a look at where we're at. Yeah, he's looking really, really cool. All right, now here comes the tricky part. I got to put a shoulder pad on him, and I'm pretty sure at the angle that I put this at. All right, we're gonna see if I can make this happen, guys. I don't think I'm gonna be able to. I think. Oh. All right, let's put that over there. All right, so the skull is supposed to hang. So the skull is supposed to be pointing in. But of course, you don't show me the model. Yeah, okay, so. Oh, I was supposed to do the same thing on the other side, wasn't I? Aha! Uh ha! -huh, uh -huh. I messed it up in two places. One of which is going to be a lot harder to fix than the other one. I'm going to show you on the other side how you're supposed to do this. Oh, jeez. So let's put some, I put glue completely in the wrong place. I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to show you what's going on. This is a tough piece because I messed it up. So I got to auto. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so if you look, I have to point, I had to put shoulder pads on them. I should have did that before I put the arm on. Um, I'm going to tell you something. It actually might be easier if you do them the way I did it. 
So if you actually don't follow the instruction manual, because it's actually easier once the arm is secured to the figure to do the shoulder pad. I think it would have been harder to get it on there and then to put the whole thing over on top of it. So I'm pretty sure when I did the other arm. Oh, so I'm supposed to do 24 and 25. Which I totally didn't do that. To put the, let's just make a larger shoulder pad. Um, not always do I do I go rogue on GW's um, build instructions. There are a couple of times I have. But how's everything over in the UK? I mean, I know you said you're from the UK. How, how's the UK going? How's everything working with this whole craziness? And I have I have in my lifetime traveled to London, which I really enjoyed my time in London. I really liked it there. It will be it definitely would be a place I would love to go back to if I'm ever allowed back into that country, um, <laughs> as being an American. Um, I don't know when I'll be allowed back in anyone's country, but hopefully sooner rather than later. But I totally get it. I, I do not hold ill will to that decision. I get that we all have to do that. It's temporarily uncomfortable for right now, but, but it's the way we're going to save each other and, and do good things. So I get it. Um, but I could also imagine how frustrating it might be on the other side of the coin as well because for folks internationally you know that wanted to travel to the US whether it be for a vacation or a special or or something you know can't go the other way either so but I get you I get you all right sorry guys I'm going to have to wait till that dries cuz it's it's two pieces so not that I don't want to do the rest of it I do um I'll at least get the parts. Oh, I got to do that other piece of the claw. Actually, I can do that now. All right, piece of the claw. So, mm -hmm. perfect. So yeah, I'm curious. What what is it like? You know, how's everybody dealing with with this in their in their respective? If you are from another country, uh, locked on's no fun. Yeah. I have some family members. I, ha I have some family members that I know um, that are that are in uh, that are in the UK. So I've heard a little bit about it. Um, but I will say this: the one thing that I am super jealous of ooh, uh, is for folks that are in the UK. You guys get Doctor Who stuff. I'm a huge Doctor Who fan, and I, and I want I want more. I want I. Although although one I could imagine that one might argue that uh, that Doctor Who, depending on where you sit on the fence, you may not be liking Doctor Who at the current moment. Um, if you're if you are a Doctor Who fan. Uh, just because, yeah. Wow. You get two Disney worlds. I love Doctor Who. That's true. That that is true. I get two Disney worlds. You're right. That's right. Although, which I have been to Euro Disney. Um, I did have that ability. I did get to go there. Um, I might argue that some things in Euro Disney are. Are actually better than the original Disney parks. I, I've been one to argue that, but I get you. I get, I get the sentiment. I get what you're saying. Okay, that is going to 100% fall off. But for right now, I have to set the piece. This, all right. So this is crazy. It's going to look good, but it's impractical as hell. Wow, it fell off again. Man, okay.
Yeah, so I broke off one of the cables to him. And I, and I tried to do... And I've done this before. I've done... Because it happens. Right, I'm going to let him sit for a sec. Yes, I get two Disney parks. You're right. But yeah, Euro... I actually thought there were some things in Euro Disney that were better than... Than, uh, than both Walt Disney World and Disneyland. Um... And I was surprised by that, but I thought they did an actually better job. Um, especially, well, I, and, and that, I went a while ago. They've actually upgraded a lot of the rides there and a lot of other stuff. And I actually think that it's a pretty sick park because, you know, what's cool about Euro Disney and, I mean, Tokyo Disney, which I've never been to, is that they're, um, they have a little bit more ride technology. They've actually, they've actually taken advantage of, like, new ride systems, new stuff. And uh, Disneyland and Disney World are great, but they are sometimes trapped in the fact that they can't uh, adopt. Okay, everybody, crisis averted. Something fell. Um, but yeah. Um, all right, I'm just waiting for that to dry, and then we're going to put cables on them, and then, and then we have some customizing options, but I'm actually going to dip in, I'm going to double dip. I'm going to grab some from one and grab some from another, so that's going to be kind of cool. Um, I, you know what, now that we're talking about Disney, I'm curious, I'm very curious, what is your favorite Disney, if you have been to Walt Disney World or Disneyland, uh, or if you've been to Euro Disney, because that counts, um, what is your favorite Disney attraction? For folks that have been. And for folks that haven't been, what would be the attraction that you would most want to go to? And AKA, we're also asking, what park would you want to go to? Um, is there a lot more to build on this guy? Because I'm really, really scared. Oh, okay, I like that. The last step is like putting all the bits on. That's funny. Because um, I'm looking at the model, like there's a lot of extra bits on here. And I'm like, why is there so many extra bits? wire there and it got me really nervous but no the, a lot of it's customizable that's why he's got two different poses and stance and you have a, a few different um yeah all right i think i'm just gonna build him i don't know if i'm gonna build the other guy right now even though i do want to build him uh never been orlando looks good in pictures okay uh i can say for a hard, hard a whole hard fact that i i love orlando uh, like I said, I've been to Walt Disney World and I've been to, um, uh, I've been, I've been, ah, and I, you gotta be kidding me, bro. I touched the same part that I broke two other times. All right. So I am destined to break that. That's, that's, we're just gonna, we're just gonna accept it. Um, I've been to Walt Disney World. Do you also play the game? Uh, are you talking about Disney Adventures? I think you're talking about Disney Adventures. And, or, oh, AOS. Are, are you saying, do I also play 40K? Is that what you're asking? Okay. <laughs> we were talking about Disney. I got, like, completely sidetracked. Um, yes, I do play 40K. I, I do. I, I am an orc player. True and proud. I am also a death card player. True and proud. Um, so yes, I do play the game. Uh, and and as I said to others before, where the hell is the connect on this? Um, did I not put the gun up high enough? Ooh, I might have fucked with those. I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to find the connect to this tube. Oh my god! I am so gonna break this. It's going to break off again. 
sometimes when GW makes a model, and this is one of them, they put a piece... Oh, God. All right. I'm new to the game. Okay, let's see what we got. Haven't played yet, but I'm building an orc army at the moment. What do you think orcs will look like in 9th edition? Okay. Ooh, that's an awesome question. I'm totally going to answer that. So I think orcs in 9th edition are going to act are going to be very good. Um, and I'm going to tell you why. Um, so what I'm what I'm very interested in, so what interested me immediately about 9th edition was the terrain rules. Um, so I really like this whole idea that terrain now is becoming an actual like thing. So not to say before that you couldn't use terrain to your advantage in eighth edition, uh, which you could. I, okay, guys, I gotta let that dry. I'm gonna answer the question and then we'll go into the cables. Um, but I like this new scenery stuff because I think that you'll be able to, as an orc player, be able to get your orcs up the field. Um, by strategically going and cover, you know, even though they're a horrid army, you can use the train to your advantage to get stuff in where you got to go um, and then get them to charge. Now, funny enough, the model I'm building, uh, which is this wonderful mech dude, actually helps your orcs on charges so they can re-roll their charges. Um, so I think pieces like this, I think he is directly, I think this box set is directly to pepper in some stuff for ninth edition they're giving you these models because in ninth edition what they're going to be able to do is going to help you enforce um for a better orc play so i said it before when i was doing my overall of the box um i think this box if you're an orc player is a if you can split it with someone like if you know somebody that would maybe take the space wolves or maybe they're new like you and they want to grab an army um if they would go half and half on you on the bot with the box because it's a it's 170 dollar box um, the orc player will definitely you'll definitely come out with a good buy I may, I, I, personally if I was doing this with a friend um, I might give him or her um, I might do I might not do a 50-50 I think the orc player should actually pay a little bit more because you're getting a lot more stuff but uh, yeah I think the scenery rules uh, and the way you're going to use terrain is going to really help an orc army to run up the field because they got to run, you know, orc orc army. You, you, that's the idea. You you're playing a horde army to to, uh, you know, you're playing a horde army to uh, to get yourself to to get in their face. And you need enough people to get there, so that's why you need so many models. Yeah, I think. Do you feel like that answered the question? I don't know if that answered your question, or was I too vague? Um, I I'm, I I will be honest. I know a little bit of the ninth edition rules, um, because we've been in lockdown. I haven't necessarily played with anybody, um, like simulating ninth edition rules. So I I, I don't. I don't know. Uh, here we go. Oh, God. Uh, all right. But that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, and also, uh, I'm thinking that the, um, I'm thinking that the vehicles, so the Speed Freak vehicles, um, I've been painting an army at the moment. Do you think these units will still do well? Three Big Macs with Shooter. Uh, so I've got a lot of ranged it at the moment. Uh, shoot a 40 Gretchen, 30 boys with shooters, 15 Ludas. Um, so my question is with your Gretchen, so you, you throw, are you not, you throwing some, are you throwing any vehicles in there? Like, do you throw, see that, I, my, my thing was going to be to throw Gretchen's, I wanted to make Gretchen bombs. 
where I basically just load a bunch of Gretchen into a vehicle and like throw them in front of your line so I could then run all my orcs up. Um, that would like that was my big play um, to do a distraction. Um, so are you are you doing vehicles? Because I three Big Mac would shoot a well, it's three Big Mac, yeah. Forty Gretchen. So are you putting? So you're doing what typical orc players do, which is they're putting the Gretchens in front of you're you're putting Gretchens in front of orcs so that we shoot the Gretchens. And then you get the orcs up, which is another way to do it. But um, uh, so to answer your question, I think yes. Oh, okay. Well, I mean that's what you want to play. So the Gretchen are mentioned. The Gretchen and an orc army are meant to be distractions. That's all I have at the moment. Okay. Well, I mean that's good. 40, 40 Gretchen's not bad. You want to do those in two units of twenty, um, and then the thirty boys with shooters is not a bad thing. The fifteen Ludas. Um, Yeah, it's not bad. It's not a bad starting list. So you might want to think about your in your next purchases. Look at a few of the orc vehicles, um, like the battle wagon, which a battle wagon is good because you can throw some folks in it. Um, or looking at some of the speed freak vehicles or the vehicles they had, like the squid launcher. There's a few other vehicles. There, there's one vehicle they have that literally has a teleporter, so it can it can hop, it can jump around the board. That gives you some mobility. It also can take out stuff. But again, the idea is to run all that front so your orcs can get up. Because your orc boys... Uh, you know, you want to get them... Because orc shooting is pretty... I don't want to say it's... It is trash. Uh, why, why am I not going to say that? Orc shooting is kind of crappy. Like, orcs are known for having terrible shooting because they don't hit well on shooting. Um... Where orc shine is in when you get up and up close. It's weird to say that in 40k because 40k is not really a close combat game, um, but orcs were designed to be that way, which is why they're a horde army. And you, like I said, you get a lot of them, so you can you can they can take abuse on their way up. But why I think they're going to be good in the new system is that, like I said, the new system values um, the ter the terrain you can you can hide, you can be more strategic. But where I think they're going to come up a little short is going to be in the, um, with the terrain, their shooting is not good to begin with. So in the terrain, it's going to make it worse. So you may find it frustrating. That's the only thing in 9th edition... And this arm is either too low or I'm putting this on the wrong thing. Yeah, but when you're thinking about... Okay, I think I might have... I got, I got one building problem. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. My issue is, is that when I look at this one, ah, okay. So when I look at this cable, if I were to put the cable like this, okay, I see what they want me to do. can't fit there like that. Alright, I'm going to have to make... I'm going to have to make another piece to make this work. Because basically, in order... Yeah, it's not sitting right in there. It 
It's not going to look right. Where? I'm so confused as to where they want this to go. Like, he... Okay, they, they want... Is it supposed to go... No, it can't go down there. It's going to go like this. I'm going to make this work like this. I'm going to try to make this. All right, so basically what I'm having trouble with, guys, I'm going to show you, is that, um, so they want me to put that cable there. In the in the diagram, in the diagram, they want his, they want this cable to basically rest in here. They want it to rest right there, but I don't know any way that I'm going to be able to do that. It's not long enough. Unless I put the wrong cables on the wrong thing, but no, I don't think I did. Yeah, the oh, that's gonna be that's gonna be game set match for that. All right, so now that that set a little bit better. All right, so I'll glue. I'll just glue that in. I don't know how the hell they thought I was going to get that in there. Oh, that's fine. All right. Sorry, guys. I know um, this is probably not looking like the most coolest video on the planet because I'm trying to improvise. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this down. So I'm going to put... There we go. I'm going to put a little bit of a bend in that. So it looks a little bit more natural. And then I'm probably going to vent. I'm going to have to sculpt this. Maybe I'll do it with green stuff. Just to make it look a little bit more uniform. But at least then it looks like it's going into the mech arm. So I can I can cheat it a little bit. Make it look a little bit better. Because I don't know. Maybe, maybe this pack didn't get moved correctly. I mean I don't see a seam. Like I put something on wrong. So I don't. Typically, when things like that happen, it's usually because the model's not sitting right, so you haven't jointed it right, and that's why the thing doesn't fit, because it's all pretty precision-based. Um, so, it's kind of weird that it didn't do that. Alright, now comes the customizing. So, I'm going to put him on the, the more scattered base, and then I can go a couple of different ways with his head. Let's take a look at the head options. Um, let's see here. 45 and 47. So maybe I'm wrong. Let's take a look. Oh, that's pretty cool. What's... Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go, I always go with the more angry. I like my orcs angry. I'm looking forward to Gaz, even if it isn't in the army I, uh, I run, he will be sitting right beside me for motivation. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, so I will, I, I will tell you that um, obviously I got to get my hands on 9th edition. I'm probably going to be playing Necrons at the beginning if I do battle coverage of ninth edition my hope is i'll have my studio done by then um and i will be starting to run battle reports i have to work out the logistics of it i have a couple of buddies that i'm going to be doing this with um and we're you know i'm i, I don't know what i think we're going to do virtual um and i'm going to figure it all out but um it uh it's funny that you say that um so i, I even though i am doing this model because i am a total orc player and i will be putting him more than likely in my army um, I'm also doing it because I have an idea for an original campaign show with this model. So you're going to actually see this. I don't want to tell you guys what it is just yet. Um, why do I feel like that's not going to fit in there?
He's holding his own head. It's very Shakespearean. Um, popped out, didn't it? No, it didn't pop out. It stayed. Okay. Um, we're, okay. So it is on the lip bottom. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to figure out how his head is supposed to fit in there. You know what? I'm just going to raise the camera just a tiny bit. I feel like that's not sitting in there right. Yeah, I think I think the head is the hardest part of this model. If I have to give uh, a degree of difficulty for this model, I think the head's the hardest thing because I'm trying to look at the stunts, the steads. So they, they are 100% saying. Okay, so it is not hard to put that in. I'm just an idiot. Uh, is it the right head for the pose you chose? So you know what? It's funny. You don't have to. Ch so the head doesn't change. You can customize the head. So I'll show you what I mean. You always build him with those legs in that way. Um, the head actually doesn't matter. You can customize the head. You just put a different head plate because it's a back. It's a it's one piece with the tongue on it, and then you put the head over it. So this actually never changes. This all of this all of this model never changes. What changes that gives you the pose difference is the base. So if you want them slightly tilted, which is what I'm doing, then you're gonna put them on the base that makes them tilted. So it's actually the base that changes his pose, not the model itself. It's actually a pretty unique way of doing it. I have to give GW a little bit of credit for that. It's pretty nifty. What's confusing about the model... And what I don't like about the model... Oh, there we go. That's that's the right fit. Now it fit. I had to just take it out and put it in. Now now that's right. I don't know why there's a gap there. I'm assuming does he have another piece? Let me see. Oh yeah, he's like every other orc on the planet. He's got he's got under armor. He's got that that iron iron jaw armor thing. All right. So according to them, I gotta put. A little bit of glue here, a little bit of glue here, and all this magical stuff's gonna happen. So yeah, so like I said, if you pick the base that's curved, That's how he gets the stance difference. I got. I got to put a lot more. Actually, you know what? Let's let's be smart, guys. Okay. And I think I'm actually running out of glue. 
which means I will be running to the store to get some more. Hold them there for a minute. But yeah, it's pretty ingenious. I like I like that they used. Okay. Hey, idiot! All right, we gotta hold it there for a while. So let's get him back in position. We're gonna just hold that. So again, I was saying before, I like using super glue because for the most part, super glue gives you a hold really quickly. Whereas the, mo the, the plastic glue, it takes a while to set because what's actually happening is that the two pieces of plastic are fusing together on a chemical level. That's why plastic glue takes longer to set than the other glue does. Which is why I always tell people that although I use super glue, technically plastic glue does give you a better um, bond it does actually hold the model better together, so you are getting a more, um, you know, structurally integral model. Sorry that it's taking me a minute, guys. My hand is also gluing to the bottom of the base. And then we get to customize our bits, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna mix and match. For mine. All right, so he is. He's looking pretty intimidating. I got to tell you. Once this dries, I'm just gonna let it dry for a minute. I will show you guys. But he looks insane. Like. And he's got, I put him on the ridge so he's up high, so he's like doing the claw thing with the gun. So he is, he's looking like he's going to murder you. He, he looks, he looks very angry. But he's a dork, so I expect this. That's weird. It's always weird they make you put that on last. Alright, so. I'm just going to take out these pieces because I'm going to need these. Yeah, and I'm gonna do. I'm. I'm probably gonna do the like traditional checkering on him. I'll do. I'll do some fun stuff with his armor, which I've always done. I always like doing. I, I'm a really when it comes to orcs. I'm like old school GW orcs. Have you got any planes or jets in your army? No. Uh, the planes suck. <laughs> That's you know what? Not true. The planes don't suck, but I don't have any planes. No. Um. I was looking at the Daka Jet. The Daka Jet's not bad. Um, they can do bombing runs. Um, they are not bad. They're not bad. I don't have any planes in my army. Um, I went more for the ground vehicles, the speed freak vehicles and stuff like that. I like that stuff. Um, again, I play 40K a little bit more like a traditional. Like I just, I told you basically my shtick. You know, it's to shove a bunch of people in vehicles and then throw throw them out there war wagons with Gretchen in them and then you have you shoot all the Gretchen and then I run the orcs up um, that's how I do it um, planes are not bad doesn't he have feet I gotta put those things on too man you guys are just making me work like I said guys if you're enjoying what you're hearing if you like what we're doing if you find the conversation fun um I can promise you that I'll have 9th edition stuff coming. I'm going to have a lot of other, you know, both GW. Oh, oh now I'm going to definitely, my hands are going to be permanently. Yeah, I love the visual of the orc vehicles. Yes. that that's, I, That is one reason I got them. Um, and then they actually, they do play really good. They have... They have some really cool rules with the vehicles, you know. It's, like I said, especially um, the newer the newer ones they added. Um, the newer ones they added with the speed freaks. Those vehicles were really cool. Oh, nice! Thanks for uh, who just followed. Oh, thank you. Yes, this is awesome sauce. Um, 
I will. I promise we will also do, be doing painting tonight. I'm just gonna get this done, and then we're gonna do some painting. But I, I'm having a lot of fun. You guys are. You guys are getting me chatting. You're getting me talking. Bunch of orcs and Gretchen hanging out. Yeah. I, oh, the models like from a painting standpoint, like a building standpoint, they're so much fun. Um, like as an artist and somebody who does commission painting, I love the. I love the paints for those. They're they're nuts. They're they're super super nuts. One hundred percent. Okay. Where's the other little thing? Yeah, we're almost done with them. I'm just letting them. I'm really letting that base sit in. I want them to get really stuck to the base before I uh, before I start putting all these little bits on them. Uh. Sorry guys, I thought I lost one of his feet. I got very, I got extremely nervous for a minute. I'm sure we all have had those model moments. You guys are building models at a table, and uh, you know, I find it's usually, it always seems to be the heads. The heads are the number one thing that wants to roll off and fall under your table, and you'll lose forever. Um, funny story about that. Uh, so I did that. I, I was building the human team in Blood Bowl for all you Blood Bowl fans out there. Um, and I lost one of the heads. Moved to a new house. Found the head. Moved. Found the head on the floor. I now have the head. It's actually right here. I will have to break open the model to put it back together. But I found the head to the human. Uh, it's actually the catcher. It's one of the catchers on the team. Uh, which I'm going to be actually painting the human team up and doing a free giveaway with that because I don't like humans in Bubble. Not that I, not that they're bad. I just don't like playing them. Um, they are not my jam. And bubble. I also love GW when they do this. So I never understood. There we go. GW always loves for you to put that chin guard. They always love for you to put the chin guard at the end. Now. This is where I'm sure a lot of people just went in a crazy tiz because they saw I put the chin guard before I painted it. I am very much not able to paint a model in pieces. I've never been able to do it. I've never been good at it. I need to see the model together. I need to make color choices. I need to make shadow choices that way. Um, all of those things. So um, I have to put the model together. Um, the other reason I do it is because there are literally pieces of that piece that if you were to paint it off the sprue and off the piece, there would be no reason for you to do it. Um, I also don't use an airbrush, which is the other reason. For a lot of people, they do that because they use airbrushing. Um, I don't use an airbrush. I do everything by hand with, with a brush. So... I have been painting as a one piece. Yeah, I, I paint as one piece. I, again... It's just the way that I learned how to paint. I just don't know how to paint any other way. Um, uh, the, my rationale as to the, the why behind it. A 
is that I, I like I said, I like to paint it that way so I can um, see the shadows. So I can, uh, specifically, I like to see the shadows that the model is casting. Um, so when you paint, you can bring your highlights and your shadows into a better uh, place. Actually, gonna, I'm going to put his feet up. Yeah, four. Yeah, come on. Oh, my God. All right, let me try doing it from this angle. Ah. As I get the model into a spot. Yeah, see, this is a great example of why I don't use plastic glue anymore. Because if you were using plastic glue right now, when it's sliding around, you would be touching more parts of the model, and you could actually take details of the model out if you're using plastic glue, because it'll start melting wherever you touch. The one thing I hate about 40K models in general is that GW made 40K models, and they put spikes on like 50% of them, and then they expect you, the guy that has to put it together, to like push down on a spike to like get pressure to glue something together. Love GW's designs. Sometimes don't like that part. It's like, oh, you need to like, and they always do that. They always put it right where the spike is. Especially if you're a chaos player, God, or I was gonna say, or an orc player. Orc player is it's like you bleed, you just get cut, and you have blood. All over your your crafting table or your hobby bench, you're like, oh, I was I was thinking that I would put blood on this model today. All right, great. Blood it is. Again, with chaos, that's very fitting. You're giving them a blood sacrifice. You've put your blood into the army. You are helping the uh, yeah. You, you're, you've given to corn. These feet are annoying. Looking good. Glad to. Glad you had a new. Uh, glad he got a new model. Yeah, I I think this model is amazing. This is such a good model. Yeah, you can check. You can check it out. We're in good, good shape. This is some good stuff. All right. Um, I I'm pretty much done. Um, uh, I may. I think I'm gonna do. I definitely want to do the smoking cannon. So I'm gonna pop these in. Cause I like. I like that. That's why I said I was gonna mix and match. I'm actually doing the guns off of the. Uh, Oh wait, no. That's how you do it. I'm, I'm, I'm good. They, they give you a little nub to put in, and I'm like not doing that. Beautiful. That's what I wanted to do. Oh, here he comes. You guys ready to see me glue something in my hand? It's gonna happen in about two seconds. Yeah, it's excellent. We're getting there. I'm going to give him a minute to dry. Oh, you guys want to be funny on this last one, huh? Come on. Come on. 
Where did you put the dot? Oh, you put the dot right there. Yes, yeah, sneaky. Oh, jeez. block that one okay so I will say but that's true of any I think that's true of any little bit I'm also trying to do something that's not on the model kit so that's okay you haven't really missed much you just missed me fighting with this model that's ah god damn it ah oh, man it's it's you know what it is they made the plastic piece so little that's fine I can just go there I'm just gonna I'm gonna go with it so that's what I did I'm trying I'm trying these I'm trying to do smoke effects on the gun which is so annoying um so I'm sorry I had to do that off camera it's just that I had to like see it and I had to like look at it. Get him. Focus. Focus on. Focus on the orc. You want to focus. You want to focus. You want to focus. Here, here's what we're gonna do. Come on. Come on. Ha! Bait and switch. So, you guys can see where we got to. Oh no, I had it focused and then it went out of focus. All right, you know what? I'm gonna just, I'm gonna tilt the camera up. Let's see if this works. It's my old trick. He's together now, so I can actually. I'm sorry that there's a little inception for this. I'm gonna actually hide the other camera. Uh, let's hide. Come on, focus. God damn it. All right, sorry guys. I know my hand is probably pretty amazing. Oh my God, why is it not focusing? I think it's because it's too dark. I think that's actually why. All right, so anyway, that is him together. You gotta get him on his 80 mil base. Yeah, I don't know why it likes my shirt. It it likes it likes my shirt a lot. All right. Oh, I think I just got to focus when I took it away. That's really funny. But yeah, so that is our model. We got him together. All right. So yeah, you guys are just seeing a blurry model. All right. Well, my my painting setup it's actually a lot better. Um, this was a like I said, I tried to do something new tonight. Um, usually this camera auto focuses really well. I, it might be the, I think it's the light that I have back there. Cause I was actually using that to help me light the table a little bit, but I, I don't think that's working. So, all right, uh, whatever. Uh, I'm not going to be able to, I can't get to focus. Oh my God. Every time, every time I change my, my setup, this is what happens. All right, cool. Well, I tried guys. Um, so yeah, so this is our this is what he looks like. All finished, all done. Let's just try this again. I think it has to do with the amount of light. Oh, 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 there we go. Alright, you guys can see it. Nice, there we go. I got it. Alright, cool. So yeah, so you guys can see, pretty intense. You got a massive amount of details in the back. Massive amount of details, just a lot of gears, a lot of stuff. Again, 
when I'm doing my painting videos, you guys will see a much better quality of that because um, I have a much better camera that, that I use for that. Um, so yeah, so this was our, our, our building. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for all the new followers that I uh, have now and then you guys are going to be joining me. Like I said, I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to come back. We're going to do some more painting. Um, and then uh, each day, like tomorrow, I typically do one gaming video a day. I'm going to be doing one painting video a day and uh, I'll be doing some live drawing. Um, I will definitely be keeping this kit out. We'll get, we're going to be building this. I don't know if I'll do more model building or talking. I think you guys enjoyed it. it sounds like everybody got some, some good tidbits about 9th edition. We talked a little bit about some new stuff, some new announcements with GW, some stuff on the horizon for... I'm curious to see what's going to happen to AOS. I think AOS is going to have some interesting stuff happening. Um, it's just not going to be now. Um, so yeah, so I, I really am looking forward to painting this guy up. Uh, and to get some more models, I'm gonna have tons of other stuff coming. Uh, we'll do some. We're gonna have lots of reviews of King King of War products. Um, so Manic Games has been really nice enough. They're gonna sponsor some of my videos. I'm really excited. I'm just waiting for this stuff to get here. Um, so uh, we'll be doing some of that. <laughs> Wah! That's right. I love it. I love that he's a diehard. Oh, that's awesome. Wah! It's absolutely true. Um, super duper fun um yeah uh it's 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 daka 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 that's it more daka that's that's what i uh, for us orc players um and he does that he he actually pumps up that uh, specific thing and he has that ability as well and he pumps it up for other people in there so it's really ridiculous if you get him on the field um but yeah so uh yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this we're gonna do more in the range um like i said Oh, thank you. Yeah, like I said, I'll be back with some more painting. We're going to do some late night painting. I'm going to paint all night because this is like the first night I felt better. So I'm going to really take advantage of it. We're going to do some painting. Again, that's going to be that World Eater Horus Heresy army that I have to get done. Um, and I might do some, I think I'm going to do some Crisis Protocol in there too. So uh, if you if you like Marvel Crisis Protocol, if you like Mar the Marvel uh, miniature game or Marvel characters in general, uh, that's what we're going to be painting later. I'm going to do some of the Commission army and I'm going to jump into some of that because I'm going to get both of them done. Um, and then I'll have a lot of other stuff. We're going to have a lot of Warhammer Quest, uh, both 40k Warhammer Quest and uh, Silver Tower for folks that know what that is. Some retro uh, sets for Warhammer Quest. Um, I'm going to get all that done. And then I'll eventually have some re battle reports and gaming videos. We'll have more uh, tabletop series, gaming reviews. Oh, God. Um,. We're getting all that together. I'm so excited. So come along for the journey. Again, if you like everything I heard, if you like what you heard so far, if you like what you said, um, if not, you want to rewatch the rest of this video, check it out um, and see what we've been doing. Please do check out my other videos. And uh, if you like it, please follow. Uh, and if you really like it, come on back when we're live, contribute, give us some comments. Um, it's all good stuff. I love when I have an audience and I'm talking with you guys. It is fun. Um, and I can't wait to bring some of my art again. You can check me out on Instagram under Vant Mario. You can check out the links below. Those are buttons for both uh, my website, ModernGeekComics.com. You can check out both my comic and illustrative work, as well as my painting and commission work. Um, and you can contact me there for any kind of commissions, whether it be um, drawing or painting. Uh, and you can also check out my Patreon. My Patreon right now is specifically my uh, illustration, drawing, cartooning, and comics. Um, but that Patreon helps to support this channel as well and helps to support all of the content. I'm a multi-content channel, so I do a lot of different things. Um, if you want to see more, if you want to see more dynamic content, you want to see be able to bring you more miniatures and reviews and more games, um, that monetary support helps a lot. It's what gives me that money to do that. Um, so if you can, awesome. I understand right now that is a tough proposition and statement. So if not... Um, like I said, just following and being here live with us, talking, contributing, that is a great free way to help us and to get us in more places. So thank you all for watching again, and I'll see you very, very soon, literally in probably about 20 to 30 minutes. All right, take care, everybody. See you soon. And wash your hands, stay safe, and respect all the folks of this planet, because without everybody working together, we ain't going to get any further than we are now. So uh, respect all those walks of life and everybody that comes from it. Remember that everybody's day probably has as many challenges, if not more, than the amount that you had. So uh, I think treating everybody with love, respect, and hugs, best way to go. So take care, everybody. We'll see you soon.